Howdy folks, hope you're all having a great weekend and welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Demon Hunters. Good news, we've completed the repairs to the ship's plasma reactor. With the Baleful Edicts reactor now pumping out a respectable amount of power, and almost all of the repairs to the ship now complete, and given that I picked up 17 servitors as a reward for the previous mission, I'm almost spoilt for choice when it comes to deciding which project I'm going to undertake next. I'd like to expand the barracks so I can rotate out injured marines for fresh marines that arrive complete with a free promotion, but the Augurium kind of also needs to be repaired to give me better intelligence on the threats that I'm going to face in upcoming missions. But I've decided to start by repairing the augmentation chamber, which is going to give me a steady trickle supply of fresh servitors every month that I can spend on future engineering projects. Unfortunately, while I've been busy, Papa Nurgle has not been idle either, and when I arrive in the Quentum system, with still seven days to go before the repairs to the Augmentation Chamber are complete, I get the news that there's more heresy afoot. Three more Chaos Blooms detected in this sector. Here's the problem. The Baleful Edict cannot reach all three in time, so I kind of have to pick and choose. Now later on I'm going to be able to upgrade the engines in order to travel between systems faster and I think you can also upgrade the Prognosticator Choir and attune it to certain systems which will slow down the spread of corruption in the systems again giving you more time to get there and do something about it but right now I have to pick one so based on nothing other than the fact that I'll get another 15 servitors if I deal with the Contagion on Halfion 5 Halfion 5 is where I'm going. Whilst en route, I get the news that the Manufactorum has completed repairs to the Augmentation Chamber, so this is good. It means I'll get at least some servitors every month without having to actually do anything. I instruct Tech Priest Lunette to use our remaining servitors to begin repairs on the Augurium, so that at least in future missions I'll have a better idea of the kind of threat that we're going to face on the surface. But for now, we're mostly still going in blind. But, yeah, that's alright. I mean, if it was easy, they wouldn't be asking the Marines to do it. But as you can see, with the Augurium damaged, I only have limited information available on the actual threat that we're going to face. But now we've arrived, so it's time to select a squad to strap on their man pants, beam down to the surface, and kick ass in the name of the Emperor. Psychic disturbances here echo those I encountered on Coronar. The Hive cities are abandoned, but there is life below. Brothers, seek out any corruption and purge it. So, yeah, all, all I heard there was kill everything and let the God Emperor of Mankind sort out the wicked from the pure act. Enemy turn. And the bloom meter at the top of the screen is rising by 15% every turn. Remember, when that reaches 100%, bad things are going to happen. It will then reset back down to zero and then start climbing up again. And every time I use a psychic ability, it also adds to the bloom meter. Oh, we found some bad guys. Unlucky for them. Although I wouldn't want to get kicked in the balls by that guy at the back. <laughs> Holy shit. Did you see what he just did to the cathedral door? Watch over me. Okay, one of them set up Overwatch. Two of them are hunkering Enemy down. That will reduce the damage that they take by giving them an armor bonus. So, who can I hit with a grenade? Because I want to get the guy. There we go, that'll do. That'll hit two of them. More importantly, it'll hit the guy who's in Overwatch. And that will also knock him off his feet and cancel his Overwatch. Right, so now I can move free. So, Brother Purgator Thule, what can you do now? I can't actually hit that cultist down there who got blasted over the ledge because he's out line of sight, but I can knock this statue over down to join him and that will crush him and finish him off. So that's Right, since Brother Purgator Thule, who's done a good job thus far, only has the one action point left, I'm going to pop his Aegis shield. This gives him two points of bonus armor, and any damage that he takes in the enemy turn will come out of that bonus armor first. Next, 
Justicar Iolanthus. Now he is equipped with Terminator armor that comes with two points of bonus armor. The difference being that the bonus armor from the Aegis shield only lasts one turn. The bonus armor on the Terminator suit is physical, not psychic armor, and it regenerates at the start of every turn. So he's always going to have that two bonus armor that hopefully will absorb any damage before it starts chewing through his health pool. As you gain experience and you get your marines promoted, you can unlock abilities that will increase both their psychic and physical armor bonuses, but for now, this is all we've got. Uh, see, there's a bunch of them clustered together up there, but I don't quite have the range. So I'm going to move Interceptor Storm up to this partial cover here. Ideally, what I'd like to have done here was to teleport up to them from here and then start laying about with a power sword, but he doesn't have enough action points, so... I'm going to use a grenade. You shouldn't really be using grenades just to score damage on enemies. You should be saving them for doing things like breaking, suppressing fire in Overwatch, but, yeah, It'll be fine. Here's where I kind of run into my first... Well, it's not really a huge problem, it's more of a problem -ed. Brother Apothecary Han was too far behind to actually be able to do anything useful on this turn. I could move him up to a position where he could actually do something useful, but then I'd have no action points left to actually do anything useful, so... Uh, well, he'll be safe here, but just to be sure, I'll, I'll, I'll pop his Aegis shield. Okay, enemy turn. Now, the reason that I moved Justicar Iolanthus up into partial cover right there in front was because no. Justicars make excellent tanks. He's got the bonus armor, so I'm hoping they're all going to concentrate on him. And so far, it seems to be working. Yeah, working a bit too well. The cultist at the back has got him pinned down with suppressive fire. Oh, that genius just ran straight through a patch of flame. So, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, except the storm took a couple of hits there, and he didn't have an Aegis shield up, so that's actually hit his health pool. And this guy is also covering them with Overwatch. Although the Overwatch is only reaching Justicar Iolanthus, who I absolutely definitely cannot do anything with right now because it's being suppressed and covered with Overwatch. So, what can Brother Interceptor Storm do to help take some of that pressure off Justicar Iolanthus? Well, the Interceptor's a good choice for this, because they have exceptionally good mobility. And anything that they can't run to, they can teleport to. He's not going to be able to sort out the guy doing Suppressive Fire and the guy doing Overwatch, but he can definitely teleport to and slice the face off the guy doing Overwatch, and that'll take some of the pressure off Justicar Iolanthus. I've got a new problem now though, because the cultist in partial cover to the right of Interceptor Storm over there threw a grenade during his turn that hit both Iolanthus and Storm, and while it didn't inflict any damage, it did inflict a status effect, Pinned, which reduces your action points by one. So the plan was to teleport Storm over to the cultist in Overwatch, hack his face off, and then pop Storm's Aegis shield to give him some protection from the cultist on his flank. But that would have required three action points, and because he'd been pinned by the grenade attack, he only had two. So he's horribly exposed. So in order to try to deal with that, I've moved Brother Purgator Thula, put him into hard cover behind this column, and he can't hit the guy who's doing suppressive fire. This is not good at all. Well, I'll pop his Age of Shield. That just leaves just a car Iolanthus and Brother Apothecary Harm. And I'm kind of having the same problem with the Apothecary now as I did in the last turn. He's really too yes, far away to do anything useful. Well, I can engage this guy in melee. It's the only real thing I can do with him. Not kill him, but at least it's something. That just leaves Justicar Iolanthus, who is still suppressed, and you can see by the red portion of his health bar how much damage he's going to take if he tries to do anything other than popping his Aegis shield. But that gives me an idea. Well, I can set the storm, he only has two action points because he was pinned, but if I pop his Aegis shield, that gives him five bonus armor on top of his physical armor. Which means I can then act, and he does take the suppressive fire, but the bonus armor absorbs all the Scarlet loves throwing his grenades, but again, that hasn't done any damage, it's just pinned Interceptor Storm. 
He's then followed up with a time bomb. So Intercept the Storm now only has two action points again. And unfortunately, he did get shot at as well, so that's less than optimal. The good news is that nobody is suppressed anymore. Apothecary Han managed to get a reaction attack off against the cultist next to him who tried to move. Justicar Iolanthus, since he's no longer being suppressed, can march right up to this guy and hack his face off. And can't do anything about the final cultist, but, well, pretty much everybody else can, including Interceptor Storm, who needs to get away from that time bomb anyway. Unfortunately, however, again, because he was pinned, he only has the two action points, so he's unable to finish this guy off, although he was able to get off a stun. I don't think the stun's going to stick, though. Enemies have a sort of skull meter that needs to be filled with stun attacks before an actual stun is inflicted. So, I'm going to pop Justicar Iolanthus's Aegis Shield. We'll move Purgator Thule up, and he doesn't have enough... Nope. Doesn't have Line of Fire. So, with his remaining action point, we'll use his Aegis Shield. And I can't really do anything useful once again with Apothecary Harm. Other than move him up into hardcover. So at least he will also be safe. The time bomb goes off, but there's nobody there. So that's good. And because we weren't able to complete the stun on the last cultist, he does get to inflict some damage on Interceptor Storm, but Interceptor Storm then pulls off a reaction attack and kills him too. So that uh, wasn't too bad, actually. I mean, it wasn't perfect. But everybody escaped damage except for Interceptor Storm, who is lightly wounded, and we're going to move Apothecary Hana and patch his wounds up My wrath is restored. before we stack everybody else up on the next corner, ready to assault the final objective. Okay, good news, bad news situation. Bad news, there's a lot more of them this time around. Good news, most of them are poxwalkers who don't actually have any ranged weapons. And they are clustered up very, very nicely. And Apothecary Han still has a grenade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do. That will do very nicely. I think we can safely conclude that that broke up the attack very nicely. Now then, intercept the storm. So he can kill that guy nice and easy. Again, without having to leave cover. Because while charging in and hacking things up with a power sword is exactly what interceptors are for. There are a lot of them out there. He does not have any bonus armor. And I don't want to just charge him in, kill two, and then have him swarmed by the other five while getting shot at by the couple of cultists in there that do actually have ranged weapons. So, I think it's Aegis Shield time. Next, Justicar Iolanthus. Uh, I can put him in the half cover, and that will use all of his action points. Put him in the full cover here. It'll still use all of his action points, but it's better than half cover. Purgator Thule is lagging very far behind. Again, I can put him into half cover. That'll do. And now it's the enemy turn. Apothecary Han gets a free reaction attack against one of them, which kills it. Yeah, now he's in trouble. This is exactly the situation that I wanted to avoid by not running Interceptor Storm right into the middle of a whole bunch of bad guys. You just get swarmed. If it hadn't been for his Aegis Shield, I think I would probably have lost Apothecary Han here. Because he is getting the crap battered out of him. And now, hanging on by a thread, surrounded by enemies, he's also covered by Overwatch. And the warp meter just reached 100%. So just when you thought things couldn't possibly get any worse, all of the dead are now being raised as lesser pox walkers, which are very easy to kill. But all of the dead are now being raised as lesser pox walkers. Holy shit. My blade is yours. 
So Apothecary Han is in deep shit. Mostly because of that guy over there pinning him down with Overwatch. Justicar Iolanthus could take out half of these bad guys in one go with a well-placed grenade, but he can't risk hitting Apothecary Han. So I'm going to try to clear some space for Han to get out of there. That's killed three of them. It's also removed the column blocking his escape as well. I still have two problems. He's still covered by Overwatch, and any of the Pox Walkers next to him will also get a free reaction attack if he tries to move, as well as getting shot at by the guy sitting in with Overwatch. So there's one less Pox Walker he needs to worry about. I do still have one action point left. But I can't do anything other than shoot at this guy from range, which I will boost with a psychic bolt, without triggering that guy's Overwatch. And that wasn't enough to break the Overwatch, he's still standing. And you can see exactly what's going to happen to Apothecary Han if I try to do anything with him here. So, what can I do with Purgator Thule? Well, he's got a Poxwalker standing right next to him as well, who he has to kill. Otherwise, that Poxwalker will get a reaction attack against him when I try to move or do anything with him as well. Here's the problem. That cost me an action point, which only leaves me two. And the guy who has Apothecary Han pinned by Overwatch... It's going to take me those remaining two action points to move up close enough to get him in range, at which point I can't shoot him because I don't have any action points left. Shit. I can hit that guy, but it won't kill him unless I boost the attack with a psychic onslaught. So, it's something at least. Because even if I was able to disengage Apothecary Han from the two lesser pox walkers next to him, that guy would still have flanking fire on him and probably would still kill him. Brother Interceptor Storm once again to the rescue. One action point to move up to within teleport range of the Chaos Cultist who's keeping Brother Apothecary Han pinned down by Overwatch. Another action point to teleport right next to him. And a third and final action point to hack his head off with the Power Sword. That just leaves Apothecary Han himself. Just in case, first action, get a heal off. Second action. Stab the shit out of the lesser box walker in front of you. Remember, they'll get free reaction attacks on if he turns to try to get the hell out of there. But he's a marine, he's not some pansy Eldar, he's not going to turn to try to get out of there. He's going to stomp their faces in. So, they're both dead. Poth Carry Han survives. The remaining pox walkers from the group that we just finished killing five minutes ago to the south move up. A slight problem for Brother Thule, but nothing that we can't handle. The warp meter's back up to 45%, which means we're going to need to take care of these guys, finish the mission objective and get the hell out of here before it reaches 100% again. Because while I welcome the opportunity to stomp the Emperor's enemies as much as the next Marine, I wouldn't want to be standing around here if all these buggers get back up again. Good work, Commander. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I nearly lost Apothecary Han. But nearly losing somebody is just a pansy Eldar way of saying didn't actually lose anybody. He's a marine. He's had worse. The good news is that with the amount of kills that he inflicted, I'm pretty sure that Apothecary Han and probably Intercept the Storm have picked up a promotion. Also, I've got another 15 servitors. Oh, yeah. Everybody's promoted, except Justicar Iolanthus, because he was already ranked 2 anyway. Two ability points per promotion. I'm going to give Purgator Thule plus 2 crit damage, mostly just because it unlocks the ability to give him one extra ammunition slot. He is the ranged weapon specialist, after all. Next, Interceptor Storm. Because he's an Interceptor Marine and he can't equip the Terminator suit, and because he's going to be pretty much in the thick of things laying around him with his Power Sword, I really, really, really like the idea of him having bonus armour on his Aegis shield. In order to unlock that, however, I'm first going to have to give him plus two maximum willpower permanently, which is never a bad thing. Willpower powers all of the Marine's psychic abilities, and then I can give him plus one bonus armor on his Aegis shield, although that can be buffed further with future promotions. Finally, Brother Apothecary Han, and his first point at least is a no-brainer. He's getting the ability to equip Terminator power armor. But what to do for his second point? Well, there are a number of options available, and honestly, you shouldn't be taking this as any kind of guide as to how to spend the ability points on your marines. 
it's entirely possible, maybe even probable, that I'm not going the most efficient route, because I'm still a complete noob at this game, but I'm going to go for the Psychic Scourge ability, which allows him to inflict an area of effect bleed on a group of enemies. And then, a week or so later, while Han and Storm are recovering from their wounds, and I'm just waiting for the next Chaos Manifestation so I can kick its teeth in, Inquisitor Vakir completes her autopsy. This Poxwalker was one of the Imperial Faithful, afflicted with a strain of mutagenic virus. There is no doubt we are dealing with the work of the Plague God Nurgle. This must be the bloom whispered of in those astropathic fragments. Within the carcass, I found a germ of some ancient power corrupted with a foul psychic resonance. This seed is used to spread the virus, of that, I am certain, but it arrived to me damaged, and there is little else I can learn from it. In order to study how we might fight this plague, I must acquire one of these seeds completely intact. I can instruct your brothers on how to extract these specimens properly. Please ensure they pay attention. The Emperor loathes indolence. Let's not disappoint him. And then there's a further development. We managed to re-establish communications with Chapter Master Kai. This is Inquisitor Cartha Vakir of the Ordo Malleus. I am alumnus of Evixia Danica. Access code Clarion Magenta 11 17 21. I require immediate response from Titan. This is Grandmaster Vardan Kai responding, Inquisitor. This act borders on heresy. The screams of the astropods you burned already reverberate through the warp. It is fortunate for you that I am prosecuting a campaign in the nearby Chimera system. I suggest you explain yourself, and quickly. Grandmaster, I have commandeered the Baleful Edict. We face- You have seized a Grey Knight Strike Cruiser. As is my right, I have foreseen dire omens for this sector. Already Nurgle's Poxwalkers roam free. Oh, indeed. I'm surprised an agent of your pedigree is not equipped to deal with such lesser threats of chaos. Agravain, perhaps you can clear up this nonsense for me. My lord, he fell in battle during our last campaign against the Cadium Cult. We had been returning to Titan for repairs when this Inquisitor intervened. Ah, uh, Brother Ektar, that is sorry news. I trust then that you have appointed one of our brothers to act in his stead. Well, speak up then, Commander. What say you to this Inquisitor's story? Intriguing. However, the galaxy is full of unsolved mysteries. I am confident these Poxwalkers are the symptom of a much greater cancer. I only need a little time to conduct further research. Very well. I am not in the habit of second-guessing those under my command. That is, until given a good reason. I will leave the Baleful Edict in your care. You have my thanks, Grandmaster, but there is yet another reason I desire to speak with you. As steward of the Armory of Titan, I had hoped you could release further assistance. Don't thank me yet. I will give you 60 Tertaean Solar Days to prove this threat warrants the deployment of an entire Strike Force. Battleworn as it is, Strike Force Cyphos could be put to good use in several campaigns across the galaxy. Any further requisition from my arsenal will have to be earned. But I... Typical. Yeah, Chapter Master Kai don't take no shit from no waifu inquisitors. This has unlocked the requisition system. At the moment I have seven requisition points. Now at the end of every mission there's a chance I'll gain some bonus requisition from the armories on Titan. Depending on how many points I have put into the various different requisition types. So, marines, range weapons, melee weapons, armor and war gear. And the gear that you get through requisition at the end of successful missions is better. It's mastercrafted. It's better than the standard issue gear available on board the Baleful Edict. All of which means I'm feeling unrealistically optimistic about what's going to happen next. And you can see it all in the next video. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you're all having a great weekend. And as always, be pure, be vigilant, behave.